Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 6. Ryan O'Neill, a heartthrob with a legacy of iconic film roles. Ryan O'Neill, a renowned actor known for his roles in classics such as Love Story and Peyton Place, passed away peacefully at the age of 82, leaving behind a legacy that spanned decades in Hollywood. His son Patrick announced the news, sharing the deep emotional impact of his father's passing. While the exact cause of his death remains unclear, O'Neill had faced significant health challenges including a prostate cancer diagnosis in 2021 and a battle with chronic leukemia diagnosed in 2001. Despite these struggles, O'Neill remained a beloved and influential figure in the film industry. O'Neill's career was marked by a series of critically acclaimed performances. He rose to fame as a major heartthrob and one of the hottest actors in Hollywood, with a filmography that included hits like What's Up Doc, Paper Moon, Barry Lyndon, a Bridge Too Far, The Main Event, and The Driver. His portrayal in Love Story earned him a Best Actor Oscar nomination in 1970, cementing his status as a leading man in cinema. Apart from his professional achievements, O'Neill's personal life was equally eventful. He was famously life partners with Farrah Fawcett from 1979 to 1997, and their relationship rekindled between 2001 and 2009 until her demise. Their love story was one of Hollywood's most talked about romances. Ryan's son Patrick poignantly noted that while Ryan never boasted about his life, in heaven he could take pride in his relationship with Farah, reuniting with the real McCoy. Ryan O'Neill is survived by his four children and five grandchildren, a testament to his role as a family man. As we remember Ryan O'Neill, we celebrate his remarkable contributions to film and the indelible mark he left on Hollywood and its history. Tribute to Ryan O'Neill. Number 5. Terry Bauckham, the bluegrass legend who defined banjo excellence. Terry Bauckham, famously known as the Duke of Drive for his influential banjo playing style, passed away on December 7th at the age of 71. His demise was due to complications from a severe form of Alzheimer's disease. Bauckham's profound impact on bluegrass music as a singer, banjo player, and band leader leaves a lasting legacy. Bauckham's passion for the banjo began at age 10, inspired by the Beverly Hillbillies. He soon became proficient in playing the fiddle, adding depth to his musical prowess. His family's musical roots deeply influenced him, evident in his early performances with his father's group, the Rocky River Boys, and later with Charlie Moore. In 1976, Bauckham co-founded Boone Creek, collaborating with bluegrass greats like Ricky Skaggs and Jerry Douglas. His journey continued with Doyle Lawson's Quicksilver, contributing to their success from 1979 to 1985 and rejoining in 2003. Bauckham's commitment to bluegrass led to the formation of the new Quicksilver and Blue Ridge, and he was a pivotal member of Third Time Out. His band, Terry Bauckham's Dukes of Drive, featured a blend of traditional and contemporary bluegrass, highlighted by their hit single, The Rock, in 2015. Bauckham's solo albums, including In a Groove and Never Thought of Looking Back, showcased his virtuosity and attracted other bluegrass luminaries. Bauckham's influence extended beyond performance to education, creating instructional materials and teaching the next generation of musicians. His expertise was commemorated in the Deering Terry Bauckham model banjo, a symbol of his stature in the bluegrass world. Survived by his wife Cindy, a noted bluegrass broadcaster, Bauckham's life was deeply intertwined with the genre. His accolades, including the Udma Instrumental Recording of the Year Award, underscore his pivotal role in shaping bluegrass music. Tribute to Terry Bauckham.
Number 4. Guy Stern, a resilient voice of history and hope. Guy Stern, a German-American Holocaust survivor, acclaimed author, and distinguished academic, passed away at the age of 101. Stern's journey of survival began in 1937, at just 15 years old, when he fled alone to the United States, leaving behind his family who later perished in the Holocaust. This tragic loss of his younger siblings and parents was a driving force behind his lifelong commitment to Holocaust education and remembrance. In the U.S., Stern's path took a remarkable turn when he joined the Ritchie Boys, a secret World War II military intelligence team known for interrogating German war prisoners in Europe from 1944 until the war's end. This unique role placed Stern at the forefront of crucial wartime efforts, utilizing his background and language skills to aid the Allied forces. Post-war, Stern transitioned to an academic career, making significant contributions to the field of German literature and Holocaust studies. His work as director of the Institute for Altruism Research at the Holocaust Museum in Detroit, since his retirement in 2002, further emphasized his dedication to preserving the lessons of history. Married to German writer Susanna Piontek, Stern resided in Michigan and continued to share his experiences and insights well into his later years. His autobiography, Invisible Ink, published to mark his 100th birthday, is a testament to his resilience and the power of memory. Guy Stern's life was a remarkable journey from a survivor to an educator and advocate. His voice, a blend of personal history and scholarly insight, has left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the Holocaust. Tribute to Guy Stern. Number 3. Rocco Ancarola, the luminary of New York nightlife and acting world. Rocco Ancarola, a renowned South African actor and a pivotal figure in New York's nightlife scene, passed away at the age of 66 due to cancer. His legacy as an entertainment guru and a beloved personality in the bustling city of New York is profoundly felt following his death on Thursday evening in New York City. Born in Johannesburg and of Italian descent, Ancarola's journey was as dynamic as his personality. After attending Northview High School and the Waters Ran Technicon in Johannesburg, he ventured to New York to pursue an acting career. His roles, though minor, in films like Wall Street, Dora, and A Brighter Tomorrow, marked the beginning of his diverse career trajectory. Ancarola's charm and flair were not just limited to the silver screen. He became widely known through his appearances on Real Housewives of New York City, especially with his celebrity girlfriend Sonia Morgan. His impact on the nightlife of New York was unparalleled. From opening Chow Bella on the Upper East Side in the 1980s, to his involvement in the inception of the top restaurant club, Lavo Ancarola was a visionary in the entertainment industry. Rocco Ancarola's life was a tapestry of vibrant experiences, marked by his contributions to acting and nightlife. He was a symbol of resilience, joy, and the spirit of Ubuntu humanity towards others. As we bid farewell to this extraordinary man, his legacy continues to inspire and resonate within the hearts of many. Tribute to Rocco Ancarola. Number 2. Itziar Castro, an icon of diversity and champion against fat phobia. Itziar Castro, a distinguished Spanish actress and a fervent advocate for social causes, tragically passed away at the age of 46. On November 8th night while rehearsing for a synchronized swimming show in a swimming pool in Lorette de Mar, her untimely death has left a void in the worlds of film, television and social activism. Castro, born in Catalonia, Spain, was not just an actress but a tireless fighter for the rights of marginalized communities. She stood firmly against fat phobia and was a vocal champion of the LGBT community. Her advocacy extended beyond her performances, making her a revered figure in the fight for diversity and inclusion. Castro's contributions to the arts were deeply intertwined with her social activism. She used her platform to challenge societal norms and prejudices, inspiring many with her courage and determination. Her influence extended beyond her native Spain, 
making her a symbol of resistance and empowerment globally. Her recent project, the short film La Cita, which she directed and premiered on October 13th at the Pavez Awards, was a testament to her commitment to representation in media. As she mentioned in an interview with ABC in September, the film was a gift to her younger self and to all those who felt out of place in the world. The loss of Itziar Castro is a profound one, not only for the entertainment industry, but for all those who advocate for social justice and inclusivity. Her legacy as an actress and an activist will continue to resonate and inspire future generations. Tribute to Itziar Castro. Today's top headlines. News 1. 43 years ago today, the world lost a legendary musician and peace activist, John Lennon. He was tragically killed by Mark David Chapman outside his New York City apartment on December 8, 1980. Chapman, then 25, was a former security guard and YMCA employee from Hawaii. He is currently serving a 20-year-to-life sentence at Greenhaven Correctional Facility in New York having been denied parole for the 12th time in 2022. Chapman admitted to the parole board that he sought fame at the cost of taking a human life. His obsession with fame and disillusionment with Lennon's wealth and perceived hypocrisy drove him to commit the heinous act. Chapman also harbored an obsession with the novel The Catcher in the Rye, believing himself to be a real-life embodiment of the book's themes. News 2 Isabella de la Use, a remarkable endurance athlete and lawyer, passed away at 59 due to stage 4 lung cancer in Hermosa Beach, California. Despite her diagnosis, de la Use continued to pursue adventurous feats with her five children, including climbing Aconcagua, the tallest summit in the Americas. She practiced international law before dedicating herself to raising her children and later co-owning an art and antique store. Her passion for athletics led her to compete in numerous marathons, ultramarathons, Ironman triathlons, and endurance races across the world. Her son, Kaysen Crane, remembers her unyielding spirit and the extraordinary power of her mind, which drove her to achieve incredible feats, despite her small frame and illness. In addition to her athletic pursuits, De La Use was committed to raising lung cancer awareness. Her life story is an inspiring testament to resilience, the strength of the human spirit, and the enduring bond between a mother and her children. News 3. Dr. Jerome Jerry Goldstein, a notable LGBT activist and owner of San Francisco's famed Tom and Jerry House, has passed away at the age of 82. Renowned for the extravagant Christmas decorations at his No Valley home, shared with his late husband Tom Taylor, Goldstein's house became a beloved holiday landmark in the city. Known for its 65-foot pine tree adorned with lights and ornaments, and massive stockings overflowing with toys, the house drew admirers from far and wide. Born in 1941 in Niagara Falls, New York, Goldstein moved to San Francisco in the late 1960s to practice neurology. As chief of neurology at St. Francis Hospital, he became a respected lecturer on neurological issues related to HIV and AIDS. Together with Taylor, Goldstein was deeply involved in the LGBT equality movement in the 1970s and 1980s and co-founded the Diversity Foundation of San Francisco. News 4. Ben Brown, a Florida plastic surgeon, is under investigation following the tragic death of his wife, Hillary Brown, during a surgical procedure he performed. Hillary, a 33-year-old mother of three, experienced seizures and cardiac arrest while undergoing multiple surgeries at Restore Plastic Surgery in Gulf Breeze on November 21. She was placed in a coma due to extensive brain damage from oxygen deprivation and later passed away, with her organs being donated. According to Hillary's parents, Marty and Dixie Ellington, Dr. Brown had used an alternative medication after running out of his usual anesthetic. The Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office Major Crimes Unit is now probing the unusual circumstances of her death. The cause and manner of death are pending, awaiting autopsy results which may take several months. News 5 renowned Argentine singer, writer and poet Ramon Ayala, who deeply influenced the cultural landscape of his home province, passed away at the age of 96 after a bout with pneumonia. Known for creating a unique musical style called Gualambao, 
Ayala's work was characterized by a distinctive rhythm written in 12-8 time, blending two polka rhythms with a syncopated beat. One of Ayala's most famous songs, El Mensu, which celebrates the lives of farmers and workers, achieved widespread acclaim in Argentina and Latin America. It resonated so profoundly that even the Argentine-Cuban revolutionary Che Guevara performed it during a 1962 tour of Cuba. Ayala's illustrious career took him around the world, with performances in countries across Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and beyond. He was also recognized for his exhibitions of paintings, showcasing his multifaceted artistic talents. His legacy in the arts continues through his nephew Guillermo Wallace Cidade, lead singer and songwriter of the skate punk band Massacre, News 6. The family of former NFL player Glenn Foster Jr. has filed a federal lawsuit alleging that his death in police custody was the result of torture by sheriff's deputies. Foster, who played for the New Orleans Saints, died on December 6, 2021 at the age of 31, following his arrest in Gordo, Alabama. The lawsuit accuses deputies of excessive and barbaric force, including tasering, beating and choking Foster, which allegedly led to his death. The complaint details a series of events leading to Foster's death, beginning with his arrest on December 3, 2021, for speeding and eluding police. Despite recommendations for a medical examination, Foster was taken directly to Pickens County Jail. There, his family's concerns about his mental health were reportedly ignored, and he was allegedly subjected to brutal treatment, including being tased while restrained and choked to unconsciousness. Foster's family sought to have him transferred for psychiatric evaluation, but he was rebooked on new charges and remained in jail. The lawsuit claims he was mishandled during transport to Northport Medical Center, where he arrived in a critical condition and was pronounced dead. News 7. The city of Brewers in mourning following the unexpected passing of Deputy Mayor and City Councilor Jerry Goss, as announced by Senator Susan Collins. Goss, a respected figure in the community, dedicated 33 years to education, including 15 years as the principal of Brewer High School. His commitment to public service continued after his retirement in 2002 contributing to various local initiatives. Goss's impact on Brewer was profound. He served on the Brewer High School District Trustees, was a co-chair for the Eastern Maine BCD Basketball Tournament, and held the presidency of the Rocky Knoll Golf Country Club in Orrington. At the time of his passing, he was in his second term on the Brewer City Council, continuing his lifelong dedication to enhancing his community. Senator Collins expressed her heartfelt sorrow remembering Goss as a friend who always strived to do what was right for Brewer. Details regarding the cause of his death have not been disclosed. Goss's legacy of service and leadership leaves a lasting imprint on the Brewer community. News 8. Coco Baldo, a talented reggae singer known for his remarkable journey as a finalist on The Voice Philippines Season 2, tragically passed away at the age of 44. His death was confirmed by his wife and manager, Sam, who shared the sad news on his Facebook page on Friday, December 8th. His wife, expressing deep sorrow, requested privacy for the family during this difficult time and urged the public to remove posts depicting the accident scene to prevent further distress to their family. Kokoi Baldo's untimely passing has left his fans and the music community in mourning, remembering him as an extraordinary talent who brought a distinct flavor to the music scene. His contributions to the reggae genre and the joy he brought to his listeners will be deeply missed. Number 1. David Ellenson, a visionary leader in Reform Judaism and Jewish academia. David Ellenson, an influential American rabbi and a revered figure in the Reform movement of Judaism, passed away on December 7th at the age of 76. His profound contributions to Jewish scholarship and leadership within the Reform community leave an enduring legacy. Born in Brookline, Massachusetts, on June 25, 1947, Ellenson grew up in an Orthodox Jewish family in Newport News, Virginia. He showcased his leadership abilities early, serving as the student body president at Newport News High School. Ellenson's academic journey led him from the College of William and Mary, where he earned a BA in 1969, to a master's degree in religious studies from the University of Virginia in 1972. 
His path in Jewish scholarship culminated with ordination at Huck Jir in 1977 and a PhD from Columbia University in 1981. Ellenson's career was marked by distinguished academic and leadership roles. He was a faculty member at Hebrew Union College and headed the Laukheim School of Judaic Studies at the University of Southern California. His expertise in modern Jewish thought and history was reflected in his extensive writings, including over 300 articles and several books. Ellenson's impact was recognized widely. In 2006, he and his daughter Ruth Andrew Ellenson both won the National Jewish Book Award, making them the only father-daughter duo to achieve this in the same year. Additionally, President George W. Bush appointed him to the delegation celebrating the 60th anniversary of the State of Israel in 2008, highlighting his influence beyond the Jewish community. David Ellenson's passing is a significant loss to the world of Jewish scholarship and Reform Judaism. His visionary leadership and academic contributions have profoundly impacted the Jewish community and will continue to inspire future generations. Tribute to David Ellenson